thing they do is step in front of him and say, whoa. So if I've done my groundwork before I even get to the lunch pan, then he should know what that word whoa means. If he doesn't stop, I'd go up to him, gather my line up as I'm going, and I'd back him up a little bit and repeat the whoa command. The next gait that we ask him for is a jog or a trot. So again, in this gait, even though this horse is destined to become a pleasure horse, we don't want him going excessively slow. We want those hind feet reaching up a bit, and we want him going forward, because in order for him to go slow correctly, he has to reach up with his back feet. What I do want you to notice is how soft he is on this white line. Notice he's not dragging me to the outside, and this is what I like about him. So in this stage, I'm still in that chase position. Partly because he's lazy, doesn't want to go forward, and secondly, because I want to chase those hind feet up under him. Anytime I want him to slow down, all I'm going to do is move in front of his eye. And walk the boy, and I'll walk him on. Now, if I have this snap hook like this, and I want to change direction, then it's important that I do it safely and correctly. The whip can be a real scary thing if I go up to the horse and it's way up above my head. So before I go up there, I'm just gonna push the whip through my hand, grab the lash, and bring it back. So it's no way going to threaten that horse. And once I have it, then I'll just stick it under my arm in a position where I can keep it under control. Now I've gone that way, so as I go up, I'm going to change hands with my figure eight here, get this all neat and tidy again, and go up to him just nice and slow and nice and steady. Now, probably the easiest thing for me to do is turn him around right now. So we just push him around just like we do. Whoa. And now we're going to change that snap. So I can take it off the cheek ring on this side, put it on the bottom ring, come over here, move it from the bottom ring up to the cheek ring. Okay, and now he's ready to go the other way. Once we've got that done, if we so choose, we can use a longer line and chase him out further. And eventually, if he's giving his head nicely, we can hook this right on the bottom. This next aspect is on ground driving the horse. We need to do this, first of all, to get him soft in the face. B, make sure he's gonna steer before we get on. As you've noticed, I've taken the halter off and put a side pull on his head. The reason I do that is that this rope has just a little more bite to it if he decides to ignore the aid that I'm giving him with the rein. Some of you are going to say, well, I've got a side pull and it doesn't have this strap. That's probably true. The reason that this strap is on it is because sometimes when I pull on the rein, this particular side pull bulges here and this ring can get close and threaten their eye. So it's not necessarily used if your side pull doesn't create that problem. Okay, the stirrups are tied together because if he does spook or buck or run off and I pull on this and then let it go and it slaps him, I could just add to the problem that I'm having. So what do we need to have happen before we even get to the stage of driving? We've already lunged him. So you're gonna think I'm a broken record because we talk about this in the riding part all the time. But if he won't give me his head when I do that, then I don't think this horse is ready to drive because every time I pull on him, I'm gonna to have to be pulling too hard. I want to make him respond with as light a pressure as possible. So if I can just jiggle it like that and he gives me his head on both sides, then he's probably ready to drive. The other aspect is the safety aspect because now the line is gonna go back behind his haunches and some horses, if you haven't sacked them out a lot, will take exception to that. So here we go. First thing that I'm going to do, he knows how to stand still. I'm going to ask him to stand still. I'm going to go back far enough out of the kick zone so if he kicks, 
He's not going to kick me, and I'm eventually going to ask him to give to this side. So I'm going to bring him here, let that line touch him on the bum, and eventually I'm just going to pull his head around and ask him to come that way. Okay? So as you can see, he's pretty quiet and pretty relaxed. So we do that until there's absolutely no problem doing that, and you do it on both sides. Once that you've done that, then you're ready to dry them. Okay, again, you'd use a round pan or a small crowd. Some people like to use someone leading them. I have no problem with that, but I also see no need for it if I've already taught him to lunge. Because when I start this exercise, all I'm going to do is lunge him off the inside rein and eventually add the outside one. Okay, so I'm just running the line through the stirrup on this side and I'm detaching the green line from the horn and I'm going to put it behind the saddle. I'm not going to put it right on his butt yet, but just back in this area. In the initial phase of doing this exercise, all he's going to be doing is lunging off the white line. So I'm going to ask him to go forward. Once we have the horse going forward quietly, on just the contact of the white line, now it's time to drop that green line behind him. So as he's walking forward here, I'm going to keep him close to the rail. So if I do get in a problem, I can just pull his head to the rail. So I'm just going to let this line fall over and get behind him and fall down. And we can see absolutely no reaction. In fact, he chooses to stop. So now I'm going to do exactly what I did on the lunge line. I want him to turn, so I'm going to get in front of his eye, pull that contact, and wait for him to respond, and send him forward off the opposite line. Then the next step is to go into the position basically behind him. I don't stand directly behind him because he can't see me there. So I stay off to the side so he can see me out of his right eye now. Like contact, he should turn to the right. Drive him forward. Like contact, he should turn to the left. Trailer loading is a skill that should be mastered long before the day that you need to haul the horse. It is not natural for a horse to want to go into a trailer. There is no front exit. The floor sounds hollow, so he thinks he's going to fall through. Sometimes the lighting is not appropriate. So with the horse having the claustrophobic nature that he has, loading in a trailer is the farthest thing from perfection to his mind. So. What do we need to load the horse? We want to make sure that our hands are not going to get rope burnt, so gloves are a good idea. Again, no spurs. We don't want to trip ourselves up. The horse should have some kind of a leg protection, so whether you use commercial shipping boots such as these, or you actually bandage their legs with shipping bandages, either is fine. In the straight haul tra trailers, some of the horses would lean back on the rump chains or the tailgate, so we would often then bandage their tails. Now with the angle haul, that's not as common and we often don't bandage their tails. If it's cold out, we would definitely put a blanket on him because we do want lots of ventilation in the trailer. If your horse is nervous at all, one of the worst thing you can do, even if it's 30 below, is to close all the windows. The horse is already nervous and if you close all the windows and he thinks he's short of air, then he really will panic. So we do want lots of air in there so the horse will remain comfortable. But we don't want to chill on his back, so a blanket is a good idea if he's used to one. Techniques to load, there are three. The first one, and the most basic one, is to send the horse in ahead of you. Then there is less chance of him stomping all over you. 
Without the stalls, like we're in the old straight hauled trailer, it's easier for the horse to turn around. If this horse is nervous at all about this trailer, I want him to be able to turn around and come right back out if he so desires. The worst thing I can do is get him in and slam the door. Then the next time I go to haul him, he won't want to even get close to the trailer. So let's go ahead now and give it a try. When we approach the trailer, we are going to notice what our horse's reaction is to it. So I'm going to lead him up there in a minute and I want you to look at his ears and eyes. Look at the height of his head. Look at his muscle tension. Is he scared and saying he's not going to go near it? Or is he lowering his head and trying to smell it? The second is good. The first is not good. So if he starts bringing his head up, I'm not going to get into a fight with him and try to force him up there. If he stops, I'll stop and I'll probably back him up and we'll start all over again. So here we go. I'm going to lead him up. Watch his ears and eyes. See his ears are forward. He's already looking at it and he wants to smell it. That's a good sign. Let the horse do it. Don't be in a hurry to get in the trailer. Be in a hurry to make the horse comfortable around the trailer. So again, safety is our number one concern. I don't want to get in a trailer with a horse that is thrashing around and in a panic mode. When I first load them, I don't even try to get in, I just send them in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lead them around in a circle, and while I'm in that circle, I'm going to reach back with this whip and just tap them a little bit and reinforce to him that that tap means go forward. So we'll do that. If I come around here the first time and he is going forward, we're going to approach the trailer. If he's not, I'm just going to lead him around in a circle again. So let's give it a try. I'm going to lead him forward, give him a little tap, and he's coming with me nice and free. We're going to come up to the trailer. We're going to hesitate here. And he's in. You can hear by his hoof prints on the ground, he's not scared of the trailer. A horse that's scared is tap dancing in there, and he's not tap dancing at all. So I just let him go in. There's a little bit of hay on the ground. He can turn around. And usually they stop right there. Now, don't be surprised if your horse is hesitant to come out head first. The reason for that is horses cannot estimate how high something is. So notice he put his head down there and quite often horses will either jump out or they'll fall out because they don't realize how high that step is. So I'm not in a big hurry to get him out and he'll get ready and when he's ready, he'll do it on his own. Once the horse is comfortable with me sending him in and he comes out calmly and that might take 20 minutes and it might take three days of practicing it 20 or 30 minutes a day. Every horse is different. It depends on their nature and it depends on any bad experience that they've had in a claustrophobic space. So if he's okay, now I'm going to ask him to go in with me. You notice I don't look at his eyes. So again, if I'm looking at him, I'm the predator. He should actually be backing away from me. I make sure there's nothing in the trailer that he can get caught on and that there are no problems. Now, once we get in that trailer, it can be a problem because some horses panic and they crowd me, the handler, between the wall and themselves. So if he gets in that mode, I'll just turn him around and bring him right back out. So let's give it a try. Again, nice approach. And ask him to come. So once he's relaxed in the trailer and I can push him over into the stall area and he stands quietly, now it's time for me to tie him up. I am really adamant that if this horse shows any sign of nervousness, I am not going to tie him and then try to get out before he crunches me against the wall. So if he's not nervous, I'll just run my shank through here and then I will hook this quick release snap onto his halter. Some people take the shank off altogether, that's fine with me. If this horse is nervous at all, I won't tie him up at all. I'll just run my shank through there and I'll hold him in position, okay? 
Then I can reach back here, I can undo this door, and I can start and bring it. Okay? And, whoa, whoa. And if he's okay, I can leave it like that. If he's not okay, I can put a very long shank on him so I can actually tie him back to this ring so that we're going to be in a safe position and no one's going to get hurt. So again, don't put yourself in any kind of jeopardy when loading the horse. If he's antsy and wiggly and jiggly, then do not tie him until after the door is shut. If you have windows that open, you can have someone hold him on the outside of the trailer while you get yourself out and get the door shut. If you're by yourself, then you can do exactly what I've done here. I would probably use a longer shank so I can get the door shut and still uh, hold him, and then I'd just run it through here and tie it. Often we'd like our horses to be able to back out of the trailer. If I had several horses in here and a horse in the back compartment, then there's no way that that horse has enough room to turn around to get out, so you have to be able to back out. Backing out is not really comfortable for the horse. This is a two-year-old, so he's still not getting out very comfortably. When they get to that edge of the trailer, it's like stepping off the edge of the world, and they're pretty spooked about falling off the cliff. So once you get them back there, make sure you have your hand in their shoulder, and when you see them lift that foot to step out, push them out. Because if they go to step out with one leg and decide it's too far and they come back in, you'll have a terrible time getting them to back out. So the first time is the key. Push them over the edge so they can see that there is firm ground below. So I'm going to bring him out now. So it's just a nice, easy backup. And this is where it gets tricky, is as he approaches the end of the trailer. And the only way to get better at backing out is to practice backing out. Another skill that has to be learned by the horse is to accept a blanket or a sheet on him. All right, this is not automatic, especially if he's a young horse. So the first thing we want to do when we go up to that horse is sack him out with it. Let's make sure he's comfortable with that sheet touching him and he's not going to be upset if any part of it goes over his back. So he's watching it out of his left eye. Sometimes it gets spooky when he sees it out of his right eye. So we have to be really careful here that he's not scared of it and that he's used to it. And I let those straps touch him a little bit behind so he's used to things around his legs. Once we're sure that the horse is not spooked by just sacking him out with the blanket, then we prepare the blanket to put it on him. We gather it all up so it's in a very compressed area. We don't want to approach him with the sheet spread out as large as it is. Here is the point of the withers. So I never lose track of that. And so when I approach the horse, I put my hand on him. And when I put it over his back, I keep that part that's going to go on near the withers at the withers. I prefer not to pull it right out if the horse is going to be nervous until I've got the chest strap done up. So here we're going to bring his head this way and turn him around so you can see that. Okay, so here we have several chest straps. So in the beginning, it's just important that I get one of them done up. Once it's hooked up, then I'm going to go back and bring the blanket back over his body. So through this whole procedure, we're watching to make sure the horse is relaxed. So my handler's gonna come on this side because I'm gonna be near the back of the horse when I do this. And if I spook him, she could bring his head towards her so he can't kick me. So I'm gonna bring it back there. Once we've got that chest strap done up, then we do up this front one underneath his heart girth area. Again, tight enough that he can't get a foot easily in there, loose enough so it's going to be comfortable on him. When we go to do these back ones, my handler here is crucial. 
If he's going to kick me, she's going to pull his head towards her so he can't kick me. So notice I keep touching him. I don't just reach over and grab that strap. Once I've got it, I watch his reaction and I bring it through his legs and do it up. Now there's three ways of doing up these leg straps. I'm not going to get into that. Use whatever you want. Some people cross them, some don't. They just give them around the leg and some people just cross them through the loops once this one's around the leg. It doesn't matter to me. Do whatever makes your horse comfortable and as long as you see no chafing on the inside of his legs and the blanket stays centered, use whatever method you want. Here again, we want him to be able to move in this sheet so it's got to have some give but not so loose that it's down around his hocks. We'll turn him away from you. Okay. Oh. And see the procedure from this side. So again, reach across without going directly behind him, pass it under, and make sure you're touching him all the time. The horse is likely gonna react more if all of a sudden he feels it touch him. If it's been touching him all the time, he's likely gonna be more comfortable. So I always pull on a little bit, make sure he knows that those straps are there, and then we're ready to lead him, and we'll see what his reaction is. If he's spooky, just lunge him around you until he relaxes. That's probably the best way to get over it. Make sure if you're gonna haul him that he's used to the sheet and used to the leg straps and used to the boots before you put him in the trailer.